So what happens if we insert anything into the B tree, but the leaf where we have to insert the entry is already full. So that happens here. If you want to insert 74 in this tree, we run down this subtree, we end up at this leaf, but here we can't insert anything anymore because this leaf is already full. It has four entries. For k star equals two, this means at most four entries are allowed, so we can't insert a fifth entry. So what do we do? So in this situation, we create a new leaf. And we create it basically at this point here. In between those two leaves, a new leaf is created. And this operation is called the split operation. So that is what we see here. Here we have this new leaf. That is a new leaf here. New leaf. And that is inserted into the linked list, the double linked list here on the leaf level. And all the entries are reshuffled. So some of the entries go to the old leaf. That is the old leaf. Let's write it down again. That is the old leaf that already existed. And some of the entries go to the new leaf. So if you go back, here we see it. So before we had 67, 72, 73 and 83. Now we reshuffle the entries. So one half of the entries goes here and the other half goes there. And then, of course, we insert the new entry. We still have to insert 74. And there we have to be careful which leaf to use. Of course, 74 should be inserted into the new leaf because right after the split, this new leaf just contains the entries 73 and 83. Well, this means we split we had split the two leaves into two ranges. So this is now covering data from 73 to 83 and this from 67 to 72. And what we also did here, we sent the pivot to the parent node. So that is another change you see here. So it's not enough to just split the leaves. You also have to insert a new entry into the parent node. So again, if you go back here, we had 1684. Now, if we split this leaf into two leaves, we split it, but we also then have to insert a new pointer to the newly created leaf. That's what we do here. And when we do that, we also have to insert a new pivot element here. This must be 73 in this case. If it were 72, we wouldn't find this entry anymore. So as we have this condition, if it is equal to 73 or greater, we have to go right. It must really be 73. If there is space among the two values here, among the left boundary here and the right boundary here, of course, you can use a different pivot that's somewhere in the middle. But in this situation, we really have to use 73. And as we use 73 and then want to insert 74, it's clear that the new value 74, the new key 74, must be inserted here into this leaf. If, if I inserted it here, I wouldn't find it anymore later on in the search operation. So that's important to consider. So again, as an overview, here we see the state before the split. This is before the split and this is after the split. So what one thing you, you see is the number of levels in the tree is unchanged. No change whatsoever. No additional levels are created here. It's just that we have an additional leaf node on this level, which means the tree gets wider, gets broader. It doesn't increase its height, it's just increasing its width. So the interesting question is, how do we implement that? And I strongly recommend to use object orientation and polymorphism for that. So how does that work? So I assume in the following that I have an abstract superclass called abstract node. And I have two subclasses, node and leaf. So let, let's look at the pseudocode. How does it work? So it's, let's first look at the insert operation in the node subclass. This insert operation is an abstract method defined in the abstract node superclass, and it is implemented in both subclasses. So node has a different implementation from the one of leaf. However, as I defined it in abstract node, this allows me to write down the code of the insert operation very nicely. So let's take a look. I insert a key value pair. And what I do is I first have to choose the right subtree, which means if you go back, 
So here we were in that situation when we insert something, we first run down the tree, so we pretend as if we were looking for key 74, it's like a point query, so we run down, and here in the node we first have to choose the right subtree, that's what we do here. The choose subtree gives me this arrow, it tells me this arrow to follow, this subtree to follow. And that is exactly what I do in the pseudocode here. So I choose the right subtree, I get a pointer to the subtree, to the root of the subtree, so to say, and then I basically reroute the insert operation to the subtree. And here is a point in time where polymorphism kicks in, because at this point in time, I don't have to know whether the abstract node I'm pointing to, yeah, this is of type abstract node, I don't have to know whether this is a node or a leaf. I don't have to know that. Polymorphism will do all the magic. So then comes an important thing, that is this return information. This return information is used to understand whether there was a split. So what I do on a high level in, in pseudocode is the following. If this is a tree, so this is a tree, we start with a root, yeah, we run down the tree, zack, 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 so eventually we hit a leaf here. And what I do is, while running down, I don't change anything here in the nodes. Eventually I hit a leaf, if the leaf is already full, I have to split the leaf. So I split the leaf and I give that information back. I return that information through the insert operation. So the insert operation tells me whether this node was split, whatever I call this on a specific node, and this is not null, then this node was split. It created a new node. And that's the information I'm using. So basically, so when running down from top to bottom, I'm in read-only mode, but then when I go back, when I remove the elements from the call stack, I write. And that is where I actually perform the split operations. So when, when I'm here, this means everything happened already on the, on the subtree. Yeah? So basically now I'm in the situation somewhere here, I'm in the subtree, and now the caller who called insert on that subtree just examines whether the root of the subtree was split. That is what we examine here. Was the root of the subtree split? And I use the following conventions. I assume that if this is set to null, there was no split. If this is something different than null, this is a pointer to the newly created child node, be it a leaf or be it a node. And this is a new pivot element we have to insert. So basically, in this situation, we check whether this is null or not. So this is not null, which means the root of the subtree was split. We have to do something. And the first that we do is we check the overflow condition of this node. As you remember, a node may have at most two times k entries. So when I here say greater or equal, well, actually, if I have the situation that it is greater 2k, strictly greater 2k, this should never occur and actually is a bug in the code. So cases that should occur are something like it's either strictly smaller than 2k or it is equal 2k. But just to be on the safe side, let's check for that. And let's assume we run into this branch. So assume this node is full, then we have to do something. Well, what do we have to do? We have to split this node, obviously. Let's do that. We split it. Again, we get some return information, which is a new node, a pointer to the new node and the pivot element that has to be inserted. And what I also assume is that the split operation also reshuffles the data across the two nodes. I'm not displaying it here for simplicity, but that should also happen in the split operation. So then I need to do this check. And that's the same situation we already observed in the previous example. Let's again go back. So let's look at this situation here. We insert 74, we run down to this leaf, we split it, and then we're here in this situation. That's the situation we're currently in, except that 74 was not inserted yet. So right after the split, we are in this situation. 67, 72 are on the old leaf, 73 and 83 are on the new leaf. So now we have to make a decision where to insert 74. Well, we could also insert it into this old leaf, right? Yeah, but that would lead to a bug, to a problem, because the pivot element here is at 73. Now, if anyone, if any query 
looks for 74, it will run down this branch. If you insert 74 here, this entry will never be found. So you have to be careful. You have to consider this pivot element to make a decision whether the new entry is inserted here or whether the new entry is inserted there. So we insert this entry here, of course, otherwise this would lead to a bug. So this is exactly the condition we examine here. So if this is strictly smaller, if new child pivot is strictly smaller than new node pivot, we insert the entry in the old node. That is what happens here. Actually, it wouldn't be necessary to, yeah, we could leave the this away, it's just for clarity. But that's where we insert it. And the other case is, well, we insert it on the newly created node, that's this case, okay? Once you did that, you also have to signal the split to the parent node. That's very important because now the parent node also has to insert something, has to insert the new node and the new pivot element. Also, let's look at the case where there's enough space available in this node. So this means we are strictly smaller than 2K here, which means we don't have to split this node. So if this node doesn't have to be split, it's really easy what we need to do. We simply insert this new entry into this node and then we return null comma null to the parent node to signal nothing was split in this node. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to adjust your pivot and uh, pointers, okay? And finally, if new child node was equal to null, which means the root of the subtree was not split, then it's really easy, then we don't have to do anything. In that case, we just return null comma null. So those are the two cases. The case that there's enough space available in this node, then you simply return null comma null, or there was no split in the root of the subtree, then you can also return null comma null. There, those are the two cases. Okay, let's look at the leaf. How does it work in the leaf? Well, it's similar. Again, before you do anything here on the leaf, check whether there is room available. So we check this condition. So how many keys exist on that leaf? So if this is greater or equal 2k star, then we have a problem, then we have to split this leaf. So let's split the leaf. That's what we do here, we split it. Again, we have this return information, the pointer to the new leaf. And then we do the same check as before to understand whether a key has to be inserted on the left, so whether it has to be inserted on the newly created leaf. And then again, in this branch, which means this, was, this is a branch where we split the leaf, we have to signal that to the parent node. Yeah, we have to propagate it up in the tree and that's what we do by using this return value. Well, the easy case is there was space available anyhow, so this was strictly smaller, 2k star, and then we can simply insert it, and then we simply return null comma null, which means no split occurred. This is what we signal to, this, to the parent here. So this is how you could implement the insert operation in a B-tree. Delete operations, merge operations, as we will learn about in a moment, can be implemented in a similar way. So one final remark on the split operation, what happens if the root of a B tree is split? That's an interesting case. So what happens there? Let's assume we have a node here and that's pointing to a number of leaves. Blah, 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 blah. Many, many leaves here pointed to. Suck. So now you have an overflow in the node. What happens? You have a pointer pointing to that root node. But what happens if you split this root node? Well, interestingly, of course, what happens is you split it. Now you have two nodes here. The entries are redistributed over the two nodes, which means half of the pointers go to this, the other half goes to that. So we end up with something like that. Now we have our leaves here. Uh, let's do it like that. A couple of leaves, a couple of leaves in between. Bam, 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 bam. Okay, here we go. So, but what happens? The root pointer is here. Well, of course, in this situation, you have to do something different. You don't want to lose this entire subtree, right? Yeah, if you don't do anything special here, you would have a problem. So what do we do? In this situation, you have to create a new root node and the root node will receive pointers to the old root node and to the newly created node. 
And then of course the root pointer has to be changed to point to that one. And this is an important case in the B tree because this is the only possibility to increase the number of levels in the B tree. In any other situation, when you insert something, the B tree only increases its width. It increases the number of leaves or nodes on an existing level. What we do here in this situation is we add another level to the tree. And this may only happen in the case that the root node, the old root node of the tree is split. Notice that a root may also be a leaf. Yeah? It may also be that when you start with a B tree, you only have a leaf. Then the root pointer is pointing here. That is a leaf. If this leaf overflows, yeah, you end up in this situation. You have two leaves and you have one node. And then the root pointer is pointing there. Node, leaf, pointing there. Yeah? That's the same situation if you start with a tree like that. You end up with, in this situation, two levels. If you start with a tree like that with two levels, you end up in a situation with three levels. So that's important also to keep in mind when thinking about how to implement the insert operation in a B tree. In similar ways, you can implement a delete operation. So assume you're in a situation like that. Assume you want to delete 74 again. You translate that to a point query again. You run down this subtree. You find the entry. You kick it out. And then you're here. But as an inverse operation to this check conditions here, you have to make sure that the leaf doesn't underflow. So it's still okay. Half of the entries are occupied. That is this condition we have in the leaves. So we still have K star entries here. But now if you delete another element, what happens? Let's assume we delete 73 as well. So we run down this arrow here. We delete 73. Well, if we delete this one, then this leaf underflows. And in this situation, we should merge adjacent leaves. In this case, this may also happen on the node level again, but here it's leaves, which means we basically do the inverse of a split operation. These two into this one leaf. So now we're back at 67, 72, 83. This is a valid leaf because it has in between K star and two K star entries. So it has to be the range two, four, so this is three elements, so this is totally fine. Okay, so basically what you have here is delete is the inverse of the insert operation, obviously. You first find the key and then you delete the entry from the leaf. And the merge operation that you should check for, uh, when deleting you need to check underflow conditions and they can be implemented similar to these conditions you check when returning from the insert operation here, you can check them when deleting. It's a similar scenario. It's the inverse of the split operation. So you first merge two nodes into one and then you remove one pivot from the parent element. This is how you delete data in a B tree. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website datenbankenlernen.de. It has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jens Did, or you look at our website, infosys.uni-saarland.de. See you there.